Hi everybody, this is Noelle from Petite Garden Centers and we are on a lovely patio during the summer and we wanted to talk to you about growing trees and patio containers to decorate your decker patio or whatever place you'd like to. Now, here's the thing about growing hardy plant material, panicle hydrangea, roses, Japanese maples and false cypress is that you can really grow any hardy plant stock in containers, but you've got to make sure that you take care of, of course, their sun exposure, their soil and drainage. And then also, and really the key here is this third piece, is their winter protection in those containers. So let's start off by um, saying that there are many different types of tree or plant material that you can put in your patio containers. But what I would look for is I would look for kind of smaller growing type varieties. So maybe if you saw a dwarf in the name or a petite kind of size, that helps to let you know that they do stay a little bit more compact, a little bit smaller in the container gardens. Um, for example, the pinpoint blue cypress that's right here is actually a more narrow false cypress and it's not a super fast grower. So it does work really well in container gardens, especially at its younger stage, because obviously it can give you some beautiful evergreen color, you know, year round, you can keep it in that container, uh, provided you, you do give it drainage and so forth. But um, that's a plant that's very, very nice and slow growing. So you'll have that in the container. Uh, Japanese maples as well. This one is Emperor One. And Emperor One is a very sun tolerant, dark leaf Japanese maple. Again, Japanese maples are not the fastest growers. So growing Japanese maples in containers is a long time art. And in fact, uh, many bonsai are, um, you know, Japanese maples in smaller containers. With this tree, obviously we're not gonna prune it down into a bonsai. We're gonna give it adequate growing space in its container. Um, with this one, your rose trees. Now, rose trees, um, lately what we've seen and, and what we've been growing are very, very rootstock hardy roses that are grafted onto their, their trunk here. So this is red sunblaze. Sunblaze is a miniature rose um, type, obviously red in color here, but they are a very small shrub rose that grows on their own root system. So again, good hardiness with this plant. And then of course the panicle hydrangea, this is firelight behind me. And um, it's a beautiful large panicle hydrangea, usually will grow six to eight foot as a shrub. Obviously you add it or graft it onto a tree form and you um, increase it by about four to five foot. So again, this one's gonna be a nice big accent in the garden. But what we love about the panicle hydrangeas is that they are very, very cold, hardy. So your panicle hydrangeas can really withstand negative 40 degrees out there in the wintertime. So this one out of all of these, really, you can set it out in the middle of the garden, the patio, what have you in its container, and it will do fine. So let's talk about some requirements here. With all of these plants that you see here, they're all full sun plants. Um, don't get me wrong, the Japanese maple could take partial shade, the um, hydrangea behind me could take partial shade as well, but for the most part, they'll really prefer to be in that full sun requirement. So six or more hours of sunlight. Just make sure whatever ornamental tree you decide to use in your container, make sure you have the correct sun requirements for that plant to flourish. The next thing is planting them in containers. Every one of these containers has drainage holes in the bottom. Always make sure that your hardy plants have drainage in the bottom of the containers because they really cannot tolerate having wet feet, wet root systems that will eventually lead to obviously um, trouble <laughs> along the way. Also make sure that they are planted in well-drained planting mix. Um, we picked Petiti planting mix to plant them in these containers. The reason being is planting mix has a compost element plus a well-drained soil to it. So it will hold on to moisture just long enough for the plant material to use that moisture and then drain away from the plant root system. So that's really important as well. 
When planting them in containers, you want to make sure that you're fertilizing too. So again, depending on the plant material, for the false cypress, we would use holly tone and iron tone on this plant material. For the others here, we would use plant tone and iron tone. Uh, the reason being we use the holly tone is because it's the acidic formulation of the fertilizer and all I should say most evergreens really prefer to have some acid in their um, soil and in their fertilizer, okay? Um, after that, with all of these plants, like I mentioned, drainage is really key here. And so needless to say, after planting, you wanna make sure that that drainage hole stays open, especially in winter. So here comes the winter protection part of this. Most of these plant materials are very hardy for Northeast Ohio. So you can leave them out on the patio and just make sure though that drainage hole is open and this is key. So what we normally suggest is you can use some type of prop, you can use pot feet, you can use lots of different things, but I always think bricks are the easiest thing to use. So with this uh, rose tree here, basically all we would do, whoop, is go ahead and prop it up on some bricks so that we know that that drainage hole is totally flowing and even if the soil were to freeze over the winter we would know that that eventually would thaw and come through that drainage hole so it's really really key with any of your container gardens that you're keeping outside the other thing that I want to mention though, however, is the rose tree, I would protect it as best you could. So if you can bring it close to a protected side of the home, that would really help again on bricks. And of course that will help protect the upper growth of this. It can also go inside a cold garage or a cold garden shed over the winter. And then you could go ahead and you could water it um, just about once a month, just lightly over the winter months. With the other plant material, they are hardy, cold hardy again. So you wanna make sure that you are placing them on a support or bricks that that water can flow through. For the most part, the pinpoint blue false cypress is gonna do great in containers. You can keep them close to the home, near the front door or on the back patio, whatever you'd prefer to use. The Japanese maple, of course, is gonna lose its leaves, um, but you have those beautiful burgundy stems and, and beautiful shape of the Japanese maple, so that's always a plus. Um, I would, obviously, if it's in a very windy place, I would go ahead and try to, again, bring it into a more protected area so it doesn't desiccate over the winter. Japanese maples can actually lose a lot of moisture over the winter months. So if you need to wrap it with some burlap or maybe spray some wilt stop on it, that would be great. This one, on the other hand though, this panicle hydrangea, yes, it will lose its leaves. You will see the spent flowers or the dried flowers stay on that hydrangea tree all winter and it does provide beautiful winter interest because of that. Um, and I would leave them on that plant. You don't have to wrap it in burlap. You don't have to spray it with wilt stop. It is super, super cold hardy, as I mentioned before. So leave it out on the patio. Enjoy looking at it through the windows over the winter. And then come springtime, you'll want to go ahead and prune it to what Angelo says, usually about a basketball size, nice and rounded at the top, removing those dry flowers, and you'll be ready to go water, feed for springtime, and voila, you have your patio containers ready. Um, I will have to say with any of these guys, you can underplant with some annual plant material as well. Um, I will tell you that planting, underplanting with plant material always helps shade the root system. So that's really great for a lot of these um, ornamental trees. It works really, really nicely for them. So lantana under the roses, the lantana is bringing in some pollinators. Obviously the roses are bringing in some pollinators. Great combo here. Um, we did plant a few more shady varieties underneath the Japanese maple and also the panicle hydrangea because as they get bigger, they might shade obviously below their canopy. So there are some sun patients and bacopa here in this container. 
and we did a megawatt uh, begonia here with some of the trailing coleus. And I think this is chocolate drop and I know Taylor will correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so needless to say, those combinations will work really nicely too. One last thing that I wanted to mention is that plant material growing in containers, of course, ha they have a finite amount of soil space. So typically after two years of growing in the container, you would actually want to, in spring, pull the plant out of the container and then go ahead and root prune the plant. So you're going through and cutting some of the larger roots out of it, anything larger than a pencil for sure, or your pinky, and then going ahead and sort of repotting, if you will. So back into that same container, but go ahead and add fresh planting mix around the plant, go ahead and fertilize, and you'll be ready to go for another couple years. So that's something that's really important as well. So a few other ornamental trees that you can use in containers that work really, really well. I'm sure you've seen things like dwarf Alberta spruce. They are all over different holiday containers and so forth, but they'll work very nicely in a pot, in a, in a larger window box or trough planter as well. So they're a great one to use, especially if you're looking for more evergreen year round interest. You can use things like junipers and arborvitae as well. Again, just stick to maybe the smaller varieties. Boxwood can be used as well if you want something a little bit shorter um, as far as good evergreen color. Other plants that you can use, of course, any of the other types of Japanese maples as well. Just be aware that your kind of really cut leaf Japanese maples or weeping Japanese maples do need a lot more winter protection. So do keep that in mind. Some other really cold hardy plants that you can try in containers would be like a viburnum tree and or a lilac tree. So try those, they're really, really cold hardy. Um, again, you get beautiful flowering and, and foliage color and interest, but especially with the viburnum, you also get some berry interest um, throughout the season too, summer season. So that's always really nice to grow in containers as well. So remember, ornamental plants or trees in containers, no problem whatsoever. You've gotta make sure you have the right sun, you have to make sure you have drainage and good draining soil. You want to make sure that you are protecting some of the, if you will, less cold hardy plant material over winter. You can wrap with burlap. You can bring closer to the home. You can spray with wilt stop, okay? And then also you want to make sure that that drainage over winter is always there. So prop your plants or pots up off the deck or the ground where you have them. And then of course, just remember to root prune about every two years or so, and they'll be ready to grow. Very happy and healthy ornamental trees and pots. Enjoy.